Here are some examples on fluid dynamics problems. So here's the first problem. Uh, a pump is used to empty a 6,000 liter wading pool. The water exit uh, the 2.5 centimeter diameter hose at a speed of 2.1 meters per second, right? And what is the flow rate and how long will it take to, to empty the pool? So something like that. So a pump is being used to, you know, empty the pool and then the the diameter of the exit uh, <coughs> exhaust pipe right here is 2.5 centimeter right so based on this first question is first question is what's the uh, flow rate so remember uh, the flow rate to find the flow rate first you need to think about what quantity is doing it so flow rate by definition is the product of the area of cross section times uh, the speed right the speed is given 2.1 meters per second and you just need to do the area of cross-section of this pipe and this is a circular pipe you know cylindrical pipe so pi r square so radius is given uh, the radius of uh, the diameter is uh, this is the diameter so radius will be you know half of that and convert into meters you know make sure you convert into <coughs> uh, the radius uh, radius into it has to be in meters right and that's it so the flow rate which is q representation is pi r square times the speed so pi r is 0 0.0125 square times speed is 2.1 meters per second so that's it so that's the flow rate through this pipe and if you do this calculation it's gonna be 103 So 0 0.00103 meter cube uh, per second so and the second part is now it's asking how long will it take to empty the pool with the same flow rate we assume that the flow rate is constant and now since we already got the flow rate the flow rate is uh, you know remember flow rate is simply um, volume flow volume of the fluid flowing per time that's the definition of flow rate right which formula is a times v a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 but it's um, a, so but this basic definition is volume flow per second is the volume so it's actually the time uh, the total volume is six uh, 600 liter right uh, the total volume is 600 liter but uh, we're calculating everything uh, in a standard unit since we have calculated this uh, volume uh, the flow rate in meter cube per second so uh, 6,000 meters one liter has that much meter cube because one liter is meter cube or one meter cube it has thousand liters and then since we already know Q 0 0.00103 is 6 this just becomes 6 divided by time T T is 6 divided by 0 0.00103 now now this is this is since we have done everything in um, uh, standard unit the time will be in seconds so 5 8 to 3 seconds so and if you convert into minutes it's about 97 minutes so it's gonna take about 97 minutes to empty the pool you know using this data so here's the next problem so it says a one centimeter diameter pipe widens to two centimeter uh, thickness diameter tube and then again narrows down to a half a centimeter uh, you know tube uh, and liquid flows through each segment like this so and these are the speed v1 v2 v3 in each segments first question is what are the speed in the second and the third segments the first segment speed here is v1 is given four meters per second okay so you're given v1 which is the speed of the fluid in the first segment uh, is flowing at four meters per second so it's acting what's the v2 and v3 so then the <coughs> since the diameters are given right so d1 is two centimeter so 
R1 is 1 cm uh, D2 uh, no this is widens to D2 this is D2 D3 is half a centimeter so R3 is you know uh, okay so these are the given variables so it's acting what's the velocity or speed of the fluid speed at uh, the second and third segments then you will have to use uh, so I want you will have to use the continuity equation so from continuity equation you know a1 v1 must be equal to a2 v2 right must be equal to a3 v3 so this is all a flow rate this is called flow rate right flow rate never changes right because the the fluid has nothing nowhere to go it has to um, be same the flow rate has to be same everywhere so from the first to this we can find v2 so v2 will be uh, a1 over a2 times v1 so area cross section is pi r1 square over pi r2 square times v1 so v2 is so r1 is so diameter is um, one centimeter so radius will be half a centimeter you can just keep it in centimeter here because everything will be in centimeter centimeter so they will cancel out so just keep it in centimeter so r2 is one centimeter so one centimeter square times v1 is four centimeters so if you do that and uh, it's one meters per second so similarly you can do a2 v2 is equal to a3 v3 and find v3 by yourself and <clears throat> if you do that uh, it's going to be 16 meters per second if you want and it's not surprising the speed the uh, fluid actually molecules speed up significantly here because its diameter is much smaller. So part B, it says what is the volume flow rate through the pipe, and we know volume flow rate is constant. So you just do one of these, either a1 v1 or a2 v2 or a3 v3, right? Because they has to be same. The volume flow rate rate is same throughout the pipe. So I'll just use so I'm just gonna use this so pi r1 square times v1 so pi the radius is half a centimeter uh, now you have to convert into meters right because we want to find the flow rate in cubic meter per second so convert the radius r1 into meters and v1 is 4 so if you do that so Or in terms of liters, just multiply by thousand. If you just multiply by thousand, is three point four liters per second. So either way, so that's the flow rate for this system. Here's the next question: Water flows at a speed of one point seven meters per second through a horizontal pipe having a cross section this diameter, and the pipe widens to diameter. 14 centimeter and treat water as an ideal fluid so first question what is the speed of the water uh, that flows through the wider section what is the absolute pressure difference between the point within the fluid in the narrow section and the point within the wider section and then oh, uh, the pressure difference so first question is so based on the question the picture should be like this you have a pipe with narrow diameter and it, it says now it widens like this so some fluid is uh, flowing through this pipe having two different diameters okay uh, and so the first diameter the D1 is 5 centimeter and the diameter of the wider pipe wider section of the pipe is 14 centimeter right and uh, the velocity uh, through this narrow section of the pipe is given <clears throat> 1.7 meters per second uh, then it's asking the first question is what's the velocity here let's say pressure um, the fluid pressure inside here is p1 and fluid pressure here is p2 which we don't know so first question is just using the uh, first question is uh, to find the v2 we, we can just use 
simply use the continuity equation you know just like before so a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 and so v2 will be a1 over a2 times v1 so area is pi r square again pi r, pi r2 square right times um, v1 and so r1 is <coughs> so is diameter is 5 so 2.5 centimeter so 2.5 just keep in centimeter because both are millimeter and diameters are in centimeters it doesn't really matter so r2 is much bigger it's 7 centimeter because diameter is 14 centimeter times v1 is 1.7 that's given so v2 the wider section of the pipe is 0 0.22 it's less than one meter per second and which is not surprising because this, this diameter is so bigger right diameter is the diameter of the wider section of the pipe is much bigger so the fluid speed is much slower here so that's the first part second part now is asking what is the absolute difference in pressure between the points within the fluid in the narrow and the wider section so it's so we know that uh, p2 is greater than P1, right? Because fluid, since fluid uh, water flows at faster rate here, so fluid pressure must be lower. Remember from Bernoulli's law, uh, right? Bernoulli's law says um, pressure and volume, uh, pressure and velocities goes opposite. So uh, the fluid water pressure here must be greater than water pressure here. But it's just asking the absolute pressure difference. It's just asking the difference in pressure. So P2 minus P1 absolute values so then you have to use the Bernoulli's equation now Bernoulli's law so this is a horizontal pipe so make it simple right so using now we have to use using Bernoulli's equation which is the main equation in fluid dynamics so P1 so we're gonna apply Bernoulli's law between these two regions, region number one and region number two, in the narrow and wider section of the pipe. So then P1 plus one half rho V1 squared, this is the velocity, plus rho uh, GY1 is equal to P2 plus one half rho V2 squared plus rho GY. So this is a horizontal pipe, Y1 and Y2 are square, equal. So, and then it's acting the P2 minus P1, right, pressure difference. It's, it's not acting P1 and P2 uh, individual, you know, individually. It's acting the difference in pressure between these two regions. So, P2 minus P1 will be 1 half rho V1 square minus 1 half rho V2 square. And then 1 half rho is common factor. And we already know of the density. This is a water, fresh water, so 1,000. Density of fresh water is 1000. So we already know V1 and V2. V1 is 1.7 and V2 is 0 0.22, which we have calculated. So the difference in pressure has to be so if you do this calculation, it's 1421 uh, pascals. Okay. So that should be the answer. And let me briefly to mention. Uh, the part C is just the conceptual. So in which section of the pipe uh, is the pressure higher? And obviously at the wider. So P2 has to be greater than P1. Why? Because fluid is uh, flowing at slower rate here. And remember, faster moving fluid has less pressure. So since uh, the water is moving at, uh, flowing at faster rate here, pressure must be less here. So here's the next problem. Again, this is on fluid dynamics using uh, is law. So water is pumped uphill, you know, um, through the pipe having different cross section and pump is used to pump the water, you know, and it is uh, pumpy and the pipe is uh, the, the <clears throat> upper end of the pipe is um, just open to the atmosphere. It's expelled, the water is expelled into the atmosphere uh, via a pipeline. Uh, and uh, it's, it's dumping water at 18, 18 meters per second to the atmosphere. Uh, so it's acting based on that. What must be the absolute pressure maintained by the pump, um, you know, to keep the flow rate constant and treat water as an ideal fluid? So, uh, this is number four. 
So number four is right. So so first, let me write down all the variables before you use um, you know uh, the Bernoulli's law. Make sure you have all the variables. So you need uh, P1. Let's say this is region number one, region number two. This is open to the atmosphere. Remember, uh, it says it's dumping water to the atmosphere. Open to the atmosphere. Right. So P2, which is right here, is just the P0, atmosphere pressure. <clears throat> because it's why because this end is open to the atmosphere so p1 is we don't know uh, you need y1 so just make it zero this is this is our because we want to measure all the height from here so let's make this reference point y0 and what you what else v1 you do know the v1 so v1 is also unknown so on the region number two p2 is just the atmospheric pressure which is 1.013 10 to the power fifth Pascal and because it's open to the atmosphere right so pressure on the fluid here must be you know atmosphere pressure because it's open to the atmosphere so y2 is just this height 5.5 meter <clears throat> that's given and v2 is also given it's, it's pouring water at 18 meters per second but the, uh, if you just want to use Bernoulli's law uh, it's not going to work <clears throat> because you have two unknown variables, P1 and V1. So it's asking what's the pressure mentioned by the pump. We're solving for P1, but you also don't know V1. But the diameters are given, right? The diameters are given and the velocity V2 is given. So based on uh, the continuity equation, just using the continuity equation, first you have to find out V1. And once you have V1, then you can find P1 using the Bernoulli's law. So first A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2 using continuity equation. First let's find out V1. Then you will be able to find P1. Okay. So again pi R2 square over pi R1 square times uh, V2 and V1 is so pi R2. R2 is the diameter of the the narrow section of the pipe is diameter is uh, 1.5 meters so radius is half of that 0.75 uh, right it's in meter and r1 is the radius here it's, it says it's 5 meter diameter so 2.5 and v2 is 18 so based on that you can find the v1 and v1 is uh, 1.62 if you do this calculation and it's much slower actually, right, compared to 18. And which is expected because this pipe is, uh, is diameter is significantly large. Okay, so once you have that, then use Bernoulli's law equation, you know, to find P1. So P1 plus one half rho V1 square plus rho GY1 is equal to P2 plus 1 half rho V2 square plus rho GY2. So that's the Bernoulli's equation. So remember, um, we are solving P1. Now we know all these variables except P1. So then uh, this is also 0 because we take this as our reference point, right? Y1 is 0. So P1 is simply P2 plus 1 half rho. Uh, v2 square minus v1 square right because if I bring this to the other side this will be this plus rho g y2 that's it now you can put all the numbers so p2 is just the atmospheric pressure 1.013 10 to the power fifth plus one half rho this is the fresh water so the density of fresh water is thousand so v2 is uh, 18 meter square meter per second in V1, we have just one V1, 1.62 square, plus the third term is 1000 times 9.8 times height is 5.5. So, and that's going to calculate the pressure maintained by the pump. This is what it is asking. So, if you do all this, 315900, if you do this calculation, so, or... You can just keep it like this or 315.9 kilopascal. 
right? Ten degrees. So the pump must provide about 316 kilopascals of pressure to maintain the constant flow rate. Okay. Here's the next problem. A hurricane wind blows across a 6 by 15 meter square flat roof at a speed of 130 km per hour. What is the pressure difference between the upper and lower surface of the roof and how much force is exerted on the roof? So uh, here's a flat roof approximation. So here's the house and you have a flat roof, let's say, for simplicity, right? And high speed wind blows the top of the roof, right? Uh, let's say uh, this is uh, this region is uh, region number one. This is region number two. So V two is one thirty kilometer per hour. But make sure you have to convert into you must convert into meters per second. So how do you convert? So one thirty one kilometer has thousand meter and one hour has thirty six hundred seconds. So this is going to be thirty six point one meters per second. If you do that okay so <clears throat> here's the inside of the house and here velocity of the air is zero right and it's uh, it's at one atmospheric pressure so p1 is just p uh, zero right inside the house is at one atmospheric pressure and p2 you don't know the pressure here is reduced right pressure p2 uh, is le definitely less than the inside uh, the house pressure inside the house because the air molecules uh, is flowing faster away, right? So it's just asking first question is what's the pressure difference P1 minus P2? So first question is just asking the pressure difference P1 minus P2 is what? And you can just use the Bernoulli's law. So P1 plus 1 half rho. Now here density is the density of air because your fluid system is air molecules now. Uh, V1 square plus one, uh, rho of air GY1 is P2 plus one half rho of air V2 square plus rho of air GY2. Right, <clears throat> and so you can do many approximation here. The air molecules inside the house is uh, not flowing, so it's zero. <clears throat> and one more thing, uh, the change in potential energy, whenever the fluid system is air, and air has the density, you know, the density of air is very small compared to density of fluid. So it's about 1 point, <clears throat> uh, it will be given, uh, so 1.29 kilogram per meter cube. Whenever you deal with air molecules, <clears throat> the change in potential energy due to air molecules, you know, it will be very small compared to the change in kinetic energy contribution. So <clears throat> this y1 and y2 are essentially the same. So they will not contribute. So just cancel them out. But this is true only if the fluid is air molecules. Okay, so it's just asking P1 minus P2, right? So P1, so leftover term is uh, P2 plus one half rho air V2 square. That's it. So the difference, <clears throat> because it's actually the pressure difference, is just one half rho of air v2 square and we <clears throat> know all these actually one half the density of air which will be provided 1.29 you can consider and v2 is the velocity on the top of the roof the air uh, uh, this is the air flow which is in meters per second 36.1 square so p1 minus p2 is which is the pressure difference is 841 pascal so that's the first question now second question is how much net force is <clears throat> acting on the rope due to the, this pressure difference right and then just a quick free body diagram right so this is the roof let's draw a free body diagram uh, you have uh, because inside the house you have one atmosphere pressure sitting right so and you have uh, the pressure force acting in this direction so p1 remember, remember pressure forces pressure times area this is the pressure in upward direction pressure force acting from inside out and but pressure here is like this right it's acting in downward direction p2a which is it must be weaker than pressure here because pressure P2 is less than pressure P1 and that creates a net force in this direction due to this pressure difference it creates a net force 
and that that's why the hurricane actually try to blow up your um, roof because of this pressure difference so net force is just the, the net, net force acting on the roof is just the difference between these two right so and this is greater so p1a minus p2a area of the roof is given right so uh, p1 minus p2 times area right this finally the net force acting uh, on anything due to the pressure difference change in pressure delta p times the area this is just like a you know, you know uh, the vacuum suction cup problem so p1 minus p2 is 841 is already in pascals and area is 6 times 15 is given so that must be the net force acting on uh, the roof so if you do this calculation it's going to be this newtons right and this force due to the pressure difference which is generated because the pressure difference will try to blow up the um, roof so our uh, next problem is on uh, on some device called venturi meter and venturi meter is a very popular device in industry you know and any company to measure the flow flow rate actually to measure the flow speed of any fluid uh, so it's just a u-shaped device like this which is just uh, connected through any pipe uh, if you want to measure the flow rate and just by measuring the height difference which is generated which is because of the pressure difference between these two reasons just by measuring this height of uh, the liquid you can calculate the flow rate uh, but on this problem we are doing the reverse so the flow rate is given and it's asking the height what height uh, does this maintain you know uh, so uh, here this is air flows through this horizontal pipe and having different cross section uh, and this u-shaped tube is connected across and this is the mercury the, your liquid is mercury and uh, your but the, on the horizontal pipe uh, your uh, fluid is air molecules so first question is what's the pressure difference between point one and point two between these two regions all right so let's say p1 pressure here is p1 let's say air pressure here is p2 and definitely we know that pressure p1 is greater than p2 uh, but for that we we can just apply the Bernoulli's law but before that we need to have the velocities v1 and v2 and since the flow rate is given so the flow rate is 1200 centimeter cube per second but it needs to be in meter cube per second so 1200 uh, times about negative 6 222 negative 6 meter cube per second right so and q is a1 v1 is must be equal to a2 v2 because flow rate must be constant so then you can you can find v1 and v2 from this equation so v1 is q over a1 right <clears throat> so q is 1200 10 to the power negative 6 divided by area a1 is the area of cross section of the wider tube horizontal tube right uh, its diameter is 2 centimeters so radius is 1 so pi one centimeter so because I, I have to convert into meters and that's your v1 so if you do that that's gonna be <coughs> your uh, velocity v1 and similarly you can find v2 so v2 is q over a2 so uh, 1200 10 to the power negative 6 divided by pi r2 uh, this is a much smaller um, tube this is, its diameter is 4 millimeter so this is so radius is 2 millimeter so 2 but millimeter needs to be in um, meters negative 3 square of it so if you do this calculation uh, so you will get uh, so calculation 96 meters per second and you can see the airflow air flows at much faster rate in the narrow section of the tube and which is obvious now since you have v1 v2 and you can find the pressure difference between these two two reasons so just by using the, the Bernoulli's law so p1 plus one half rho rho is rho of air because we're dealing with the fluid uh, air as air right so uh, density of air will be given v1 square plus rho again air uh, g y1 is equal to p2 plus one half rho of air v2 square 
plus rho of air g y2 since this is a horizontal two uh, so y1 and y2 are equal so and it's actually the pressure difference p1 right minus p2 algebraically right I, I can bring this to the other side so one half rho of air common factor v2 square minus v1 square that's it right and just put the value so the density of air you can put 1.29 or 1.28 1.29 or 1.8 it will be given and the velocity v1 v2 both we know is 96 square minus v1 is 3.8 square so that's the pressure difference between two regions of the horizontal tube. And if you do that calculation, uh, <clears throat> so just do this calculation. So 5.9 to the power 3 pascals. That's what you should get. Okay, that's the first part. Now second part is, what is the height of this mercury level on the right side of the U tube? And then to do that, you first have to draw an imaginary line across this line and let's say this is a this is b and from static this is this fluid column is in static condition right so we from the statics we know that p at a must be equal to p at b the pressure the fluid pressure here and fluid pressure here along this line must be same there shouldn't be pressure there. why because it's, the fluid is in static balance there shouldn't be pressure difference between these two points but p at a is p1 right this is p1 the air pressure one because it's simply just open to one right it's connected to one and however p at b right here is the pressure p2 plus rho gs right from static fluid pressure right so p at b is pressure on the top which is p2 right plus pressure due to this liquid which is mercury, density of the mercury. Remember, grab, gravity times height, okay. So that's from static fluid, right? So this is, this whole thing is pressure at B. And P1 minus P2, which we know from the first part is this. This is the mercury density, right? Because we're calculating pressure at B, is gravity times height. With this, we know already. So which is 5.9 10 to the power of 3. His density of mercury is 13600 uh, from the list. And 9.8 times height. And then you can easily calculate the height. So if you do this calculation, the height of the mercury column uh, will be uh, 0 0.044 meter. And in, you, you may want to convert to centimeter or millimeter, it doesn't really matter. It's 44 millimeter. So that's how you get that. So this meter is called Venturi meter, and as I said, this meter is very uh, useful meter in industry to calculate the flow rate in any fluid system. Here's the next problem. So um, this in this problem, uh, as you can see, a big tank, you know, is being drained uh, by a small diameter uh, drain pipe, you know, exhaust pipe. Uh, and the condition is, uh, you know, condition is the cross section of the tank is much, much bigger than the cross section of the drain pipe, exhaust pipe, you know. And the, here, here are the following questions. Calculate the speed of the water as it exit from point three, pipe number three, right? And their diameters are given. Okay, and calculate the speed at point two. And what is the gas pressure at point two? So if you, if you, uh, put a pressure gauge here. What would be the pressure gauge reading? So that's the question So let's do one by one. So first question is what's the speed of the water as it exit from pipe number three? So and this is open to atmosphere So let's say p1 is equal to p0 which is atmospheric pressure and this exit pipe is obviously also open to atmosphere So p3 is, is also equal to atmospheric pressure p0 so you can just apply the Bernoulli's law and with some approximation you can easily solve uh, this problem you know so first part so I'm just gonna uh, apply Bernoulli's law in these two regions region number one and region number three right so apply Bernoulli's law in region one and three so p1 plus one half rho uh, of water because the fluid system is water 
um, v1 square plus rho of water g y1 is uh, now inversion number 3 is p3 uh, plus 1 half rho of water v3 square uh, plus rho of water g y3 so now the condition is a1 is much much bigger than a3 right that's the condition then then you can say from continuity equation a1 v1 is equal to a3 v3 right uh, so then v1 is a3 divided by a1 v3 so since uh, a1 which is the cross section of the tank is much much bigger than a3 which is the cross-sectional area of the drain pipe, exhaust pipe. Then, since the denominator is much, much bigger, V1 is approximately equal to zero, right? And that, in um, in reality, you can think about that, right? If the, if the tank is really big, uh, the velocity of the water here will slowly drain, actually. So, it's approximately, this is the approximation for simplicity, right? Otherwise, you can get the relations between V1 and V3 from here and solve the same problem. But for simplicity, you can just assume that V1 is equal to 0. And then uh, just from this equation, then, uh, so P1 is P0 because this is open to atmosphere, right? Plus, this is 0, second term because V1 is up. And plus rho W G Y1, Y1, Y3 are given. P3 is also... Uh, open to the atmosphere so pressure here must be equal to atmospheric pressure plus one half rho w we are solving for v3 g y3 so this will also cancel out because they are both atmospheric pressure and then you are solving for v3 so one half so what do you get here so rho w g y1 minus y3 right is equal to one half rho of w v3 square and we're solving for uh the v3 so the density of water will also cancel out and v3 is uh is 2g uh, y1 minus y3 right square root and this is equal to 2g y1 minus y3 right is simply the height so this is just like a kinematic equation if you drop a ball from height h, this should this should be the velocity at after it, you know, drop by height h. So that's uh, you know it becomes very simple. Now uh, just the values v3 will be uh, two gravity uh, y1 is 15 minus y3 is four meters. That's given in square root, and the velocity uh, will be 14.7 meters per second. So that's the first question okay so it has uh, multiple parts so uh, second question is calculate the speed at point two point number two point number two has uh, you know cross-sectional area is given right so the next problem is part b part b is what's the speed of the water at pipe number two and pipe number two uh, has a radius uh, 12 centimeter okay 12 centimeter radius and pipe number three has a radius of 7.25 okay then you can simply use um, continuity equation since we already know v3 right so you can use continuity equation between 2 and 3 so a2 v2 is equal to a3 v3 and v2 is a3 over a2 times v3 is a3 is the pi r3 square the radius is given pi r2 square times uh, v3 we have just calculated so just put the numbers uh, r3 is given radius is 7.25 uh, just keep it in centimeter because both will be in centimeter doesn't matter and the radius of at, uh, 2 is 12 centimeter square and v3 we have just calculated v3 14.7 so that will be V2, and V2 will be 5.4 meters per second, which is less than V3 and because it's bigger. Okay, so that's uh, part B is very simple, and part C. Now, what is the gauge pressure at point 2? So if you would 
at a, at a say a pressure gauge, water pressure gauge here, right? Uh, which would which would me measure the water pressure at point P two. What would be the gauge pressure reading? So first, let's find out the absolute pressure. So first, let's figure out P two, and then you can use Bernoulli's law. Now you can use Bernoulli's law between two and three or one and two. Doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna apply Bernoulli's law between uh, two and three. Okay, so between Two, region number two and region number three, Bernoulli's law said P2 plus one half. Uh, this is again water, V2 square plus um, rho double gravity Y2 uh, is equal to now P3 uh, plus one half uh, rho of this, V3 square plus rho of water, gravity Y3, right? Um, two and three are, are at same elevation, same distance, uh, same height, four meters. So they will cancel out because it's a horizontal pipe. So then you are calculating P two, right? And P three is atmospheric pressure, P zero. So P two is going to be P three plus if you rearrange this term, one half rho double will be common factor. So V three square minus V two square, uh, and that's it. So P3 is atmospheric pressure, 1.013, 10 to the power 5th, uh, uh, plus 1 half rho of water, density of water is 1000, V3, we have calculated 14.7 square minus V2, 5.4, we have already calculated square, and then that's it. So that's the absolute pressure, and then you'll have to convert to 194765 pascals if you do this calculation. But it's acting the gauge pressure. If you attach a pressure gauge, the pressure gauge machine device will always measure the gauge pressure. So P2 gauge pressure. So how do you find the gauge pressure? So gauge pressure simply subtract the atmospheric pressure. That's it. Right. So 194765 minus um, one atmospheric pressure is about 100, uh, 103 kilopascal, right? Or 1.013 to the power fifth. So that's the P2 gauge. So the gauge pressure, pressure gauge would measure that much pascals, okay. About 93 kilopascals. So next problem shows how airplane wing uh, gets the necessary lift, you know. So as you can see, the if you see the design of the airplane wing, actually the airplane wing has an airfoil design, right? And because of the curvature, how it designed, uh, when airplane moves with certain speed, the air molecules flow uh, faster because it's, it's, it has some curvature, air, aerodynamic design. The airflow, the air molecules um, uh, has to travel faster. It's tra traveling fast at faster rate compared to uh, the bottom right and that creates a pressure difference and as you can see faster moving air has lower pressure so it creates a lower pressure here higher pressure here, higher pressure here and lower pressure it's all Bernoulli's law you know and that creates the lift and it's acting what's the net lift created in this system so the airplane is moving at 200 meters per second you can compare with miles per hour if you want and the wing is shaped like an airfoil, right? And because of the wing is carved, the, it, the air molecules travel with 240 meters per second on the top, right? And the airplane uh, has a rectangular shape, say, for approximately, and its uh, area is given. So assuming that the density of the air is this, uh, then what's the, what's the net? So if you, now for simplicity, if you just draw the free body diagram, okay, here's the, <clears throat> Here's the free body diagram. So let's say this is region number one, region number two, right? Uh, this is P1A because the pressure here is higher, right? Because air is moving at slow rate. And this is the pressure force acting up, but however, there's some pressure force acting from um, top to bottom as well. But this is weaker. This is, and you can clearly see, right? Uh, since this is stronger, so it generates the necessary lift. Right, this is the force of lift, and that's what we're calculating. 
So left force, net force is simply the difference between these two force, P1A minus P2A. And this is just the pressure difference, right? Because area is common, area is given. And that's how you can. So that's it. Let's call equation number one, right? So what you need to do is just find the pressure difference within these two regions and plug it here. Area is given. So how do you find uh, this pressure difference? Then use Bernoulli's law. Use, again, Bernoulli's law, uh, Bernoulli's equation within two regions. So then P1 plus uh, one half rho, rho of air because your fluid system, fluid system is air now. V1 square uh, plus rho of air gravity y1 is equal to uh, p2 plus one half rho air v2 square plus rho of air y2 again if the fluid system uh, is air as i mentioned in the earlier problem if the fluid system is air the change in potential energy uh, compared to the change in kinetic energy will be really really small so you can essentially cancel that out all right because rho of air g y1 minus y2 will be really small very small compared to the change in kinetic energy term so if the air if you have an air system you can cancel these terms okay now we somehow we need to find out the difference in pressure p1 and p2 and plug it in equation number one so p1 minus p2 right will be one half rho of air v2 square minus v1 square right that's it right and one half rho of air is uh, one point it says to use 1.28 or 1.29 v2 is 240 square minus v1 is 200 that's given and that's it so p1 minus p2 if you do this calculation uh, so it's going to be 11,000 to 11.2 uh, kilopascals and from equation number one from equation number one right uh, net force is now p1 minus p2 times area area of the wing is given so we do flat uh, approximation so 11,264 times area is uh, 13 times 3. So that's the net lift force generates, generated, you know, due to the pressure difference. And if you do this calculation, uh, it's going to be 439296. Uh, uh, yeah, you can double check this calculation. 439296. Okay, that's it. So that's the main physics behind uh, creating a lift. The airplane wing, you know, gets lift because of this pressure difference. Here's the last problem. Uh, and again, it has to do with the fluid dynamics and Bernoulli's law. Here's, as shown here, you have a two straw. One is vertical straw, which is dipped into the water in a beaker. And using the horizontal um, straw, you blow high speed air. And as you can see, you know, if you uh, blow high speed here it will lift some of the liquid in the vertical straw okay and it's asking what's the height how much height it will rise right so uh, okay then uh, the main physics band that is as you blow high speed here it creates a low pressure region here it creates a low pressure region right on the top of the vertical straw compared to here you have one atmosphere right still one atmosphere one atmosphere and uh, because of that it, it uh, uh, actually the atmosphere will lift the liquid up because from higher to lower because liquid simply moves from higher to lower pressure that's the main physics behind that but you have to calculate the actual numerical value what height does the water rise in the vertical straw right uh, and let me draw this uh, a magnified picture so here's the picture this is the water level right and this is the height let's say and this is the height it has horizon this is what we're calculating and you have high speed here and let's say this is p1 p1 is p0 atmosphere pressure here p2 we don't know p2 right 
Um, <clears throat> okay, so and this is in static condition, right? So P1 from static P1 is equal to P2, right? This is water. Pressure at the bottom right here is pressure on the top, which is P2 plus rho of water. This liquid column is water, gravity, and this height, right? Uh, and uh, P1... Uh, P1 is at atmospheric pressure. Pressure here must be balanced with the atmospheric pressure because here is atmospheric pressure. So pressure here and pressure here must be equal, right? So this is just P0 is P2 plus rho of W gravity times height. And you just need to now uh, solve for um, P2 from here because uh, well, if you can solve the pressure in this region, which is the lower pressure region, you can solve this problem, right? So the height is will be P0, which is atmospheric pressure minus P2 divided by uh, density of water gravity. Let's call equation number one, right? Because we know the density of water, we know gravity, we know P0, and we just need to find P2 somehow. So apply Bernoulli's law again. between 1 and 2, region number 1 and 2, 1, region number 2, right, region number 2 is at low pressure, so then uh, P1 plus 1 half rho of air, right, because the fluid system is air, right, the fluid blowing is air, uh, plus um, V1 square, uh, plus rho of air gravity y1 is equal to p2 plus one half rho of air v2 square uh, plus rho of air gravity y2 okay um, uh, so again if this is air you can just cancel that out uh, as i mentioned before right if the fluid system is air the change in potential energy part will be really small compared to the uh, change in potential energy part will be really small compared to change in kinetic energy. And this is also zero, right? Because air molecules here in this region, right, is zero. The air is not blowing here, right? You have one atmosphere pressure. So then you can find, uh, so, and P1 is equal to P0. This is sitting at atmosphere pressure, right? The region number one is at atmospheric pressure is equal to P2 plus one half rho of air uh, V2 square. Okay, and V2 is given the, it's blown at 35 meters per second. And then you can find out P2. So P2 is P0 minus one half rho of air V2 square. So P0 is atmospheric pressure minus one half Rho of air is, it says to use 1.29 and V2 is 35 meters per second. So that's going to give you P2 and that's 100509 if you calculate Pascal. And then from just plug this into the equation number one to get the height. So height will be P0 minus P2 over rho of water. Remember, no, it's not rho of density of air. This is density of water from equation number one. So P0, 1.013, 10 to the power of fifth. P2 is 100509 divided by density of water is 1000. This is fresh water, 9.8. So that's it. So your height is, uh, height, the liquid column will rise uh, is 0 0.08 six meters so is uh, 8.06 centimeters so the the water in that vertical straw will rise about 8 centimeter okay when you blow high speed air